Hello and welcome to part two of the Commerce Connect Introduction and Understanding video series. This portion covers installation where we'll be covering installing all the dependencies necessary for testing Commerce Connect and the NOP Commerce examples. So before we get into the installation itself, let's do a quick review of the example architecture that we covered in the overview. So first and foremost, you'll be installing Sitecore 8. Next, you'll be installing Commerce Connect as a package on top of Sitecore 8. We also need to install Not Commerce 3.1, and we need to compile a number of Visual Studio projects for each of the plugins on the Not Commerce side. Similarly, we'll be installing pipeline extensions, also known as the Not Commerce connector on the Sitecore side. And lastly, we'll be installing the starter kit itself. This is an MVC presentation layer. I also note the commerce indexes here. If you're using Lucene, Sitecore will build these on startup for you. If you're using Solar, you need to manually create those indexes. This is really the core content architecture that we'll be working with and going through today. Okay, so our first steps are to install Sitecore 8 download Commerce Connect and upload that as a package, run the installation wizard, and create a new repository. We'll go through these steps. I already have Sitecore 8 installed. I'm going to simply run the Commerce Connect package through the installation wizard and go through the steps of creating a new repository. Okay, so I have my blank Sitecore 8 installation here. I've named it Sitecore 8CC for Commerce Connect, just to keep that clear. The Names of the domains will be quite important as we establish connectivity between Sitecore and the external e-commerce system, which is NOP Commerce. In Sitecore 8, if you're not overly familiar with the new user interface, you can go to the control panel and install a package, and we will choose or upload the package. In my case here, I've already uploaded the Sitecore Commerce Connect 8 package and We'll accept the terms of the license agreement and we'll run through the installation. Now the next thing that we're going to do post installation is create that product repository item using that branch template. So this is here in the post installation steps. You can see that you can copy that. Uh, second thing to note, you must have a valid Sitecore license and that includes having a valid Sitecore license for Commerce Connect as well. So uh, again, if you're a partner, you should have this already, but just to make that clear. And if you don't have that, you will see that in the Sitecore user interface. Uh, after you log in and create a new repository, you would see a warning on that repository indicating that you don't have a valid Sitecore license for that. So we're just gonna hit next and run through that install step. Now I'm going to skip to the end. This does take a few minutes and then we'll go through the step of creating that product repository from that branch template. Okay, so once the installation wizard has finished running, you'll see the dialog to restart the Sitecore client. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we will log back into Sitecore and create that new product repository from that branch template. So we'll go to the content editor. And once we're here, we'll go up to the content node and we will choose insert from template. And we will pick under branch templates, Commerce Connect, the product repository branch template. And we will simply name it product repository. I've just removed new from the item name. And this is important for two facts. One, references in the config file uh, are specific to this item path, uh, Sitecore Content Product Repository. Uh, there's a number of references in config files relating to uh, indexes and synchronization that expect this path. If you rename this item or want to name it something else, you need to do a number of config changes, which are, of course, documented. Secondly, is this product repository exists outside of Sitecore Content Home. This product repository can be used across multiple sites. So if you do have a number of sites within Sitecore, the product repository is meant to be 
outside of those sites. You should never have more than one product repository. If you do have multiple sites with different products, you should be using metadata on those product items instead of having a separate product repository for each of those sites. Commerce Connect is not meant to work that way and you will just be making your life difficult. So here we have this product repository outside of home. So it's Sitecore content product repository. Uh, the branch template has created a number of uh, folders uh, for containing various aspects known as artifacts. So when we synchronize metadata like manufacturers, that is an artifact synchronization and a product synchronization uh, will also synchronize products and you can do those two in independently. As well, you can see there's a number of out of the box types for things like uh, identification, so SKUs, ISBN, etc. And a very common one, very important, is the product relation type. So there are out of the box uh, classes for doing things like related products and variants, uh, cross sells and accessories. Uh, these are ways of relating products to other products. It's just simply a multi list select, um, but you know, choosing a product in a cross sell has a very different uh, use than choosing a product in a multi list for a variant. And so these are the ones out of the box. Of course, if you have product relation types that are not one of these, you can create those and use those as well. So, all that to say, three things. One, the naming is very important. The path is very important. Two, the product repository exists outside of Sitecore Content Home. Uh, the product repository is across all your sites in a Sitecore installation. And then last, the branch template just creates this existing structure for you. Okay, step two is to install NopCommerce 3.1 and to install the Sitecore plugins to that NopCommerce installation. Now, it must be NopCommerce 3.1 specifically. Uh, this integration uh, does not work with later versions of NopCommerce. There's uh, changes on their side. And so I have referenced here in the presentation the URL to the specific version of NopCommerce that is uh, version 3.1 that you need. So we'll go through these steps. We'll download NopCommerce and install it. We'll uh, unzip the five Sitecore plugins to those locations. Uh, we will build those plugins and enable those plugins in NopCommerce. Okay, so here we go. We're going to visit that URL that I referenced earlier. That takes us to the NopCommerce 3.1 installation specifically. So we're going to download that source and we're going to run through the installation process, which is actually quite simple. Uh, you basically copy the contents uh, of that folder to an IS virtual directory and view the site using a browser. At this point, it will prompt you for uh, SQL information, and then it will run through the steps of creating that database in SQL for you, and then taking you to that site. So we can see after we've downloaded that NopCommerce uh, RAR file, we've got the contents here. And so we'll run through the process of installing that into IIS and then accessing that site to complete the installation process. Okay, so I've created a folder in my web route called NOP31CC, again, CC for our Commerce Connect demonstration here. Within IIS, we're going to create a new website, call it the same thing, NOP31CC, pick that physical path, give that a host name as well. Uh, we'll edit our host file afterwards to point to that successfully and click OK. We can see here in our app pool, NOP3.1cc is automatically set to uh, integrated, so we don't need to worry too much about that. What we need to do next is copy the contents of that RAR file into that directory.
So we can see that's all there. Modify our host file as well. So at this point, now when we access NOP31CC, it'll take a second because it's loading that site for the first time. Now, the very first time you run through this, this is going to prompt you for uh, information specific to uh, SQL Server or SQL Server Compact. I would recommend using SQL Server. Um, obviously, if you're installing Sitecore, it's very likely that you have SQL Server already. Um, and it's just clearer, for example, if you uh, forget your NopCommerce uh, admin password, uh, it's a lot easier to go into the database and, uh, you know, clear that out. Um, you know, obviously it's uh, salted and whatnot, but you can easily fix that afterwards. So uh, I recommend SQL Server, create the database if it doesn't exist, and fill in the information there and also create sample data. So you want to create uh, a user email. NopCommerce doesn't need to be uh, connected to uh, SMTP, but obviously that you know doesn't allow you to do things like resetting your password. Um, but in this case, it expects an email format. So uh, fill in uh, your user email. So I'm just going to say mde at sitecore.net, give it a user password. B is very popular in the Sitecore world, as you know. I'm just going to use that. This is, again, just an example installation. I wouldn't use that in real life. Very important, create sample data. This is really the whole point of what we're doing here. We want that sample data, and we want to be able to synchronize that across to Sitecore. I'm going to use SQL Server. I'm going to create the database if it doesn't exist, and I'm going to create local NOP31CC, I'm using an SA account, and I'll fill in a password and I'll run through the installation procedure. One minor note about installation, I'm just seeing this here. You need to ensure that the IS user has the ability to uh, modify files on this account. So we'll go to security, change this to give uh, full control to the IS users. Again, uh, you probably wouldn't do this in production, but this is something that's uh, quick and easy and necessary for the uh, installation on this development server. So at that point, again, we can run through the installation, email, user, password, create sample data is on, SQL Server of local, I'm gonna call it NOP31CC, and a SQL Server account or a Windows account that has the ability to modify that. And then I will hit install. At this point, NopCommerce will be running in the background doing a number of tasks, uh, including file modification, uh, which is why the permissions were necessary on those files, as well as creating that database and populating that database with that content as done by this install script. So again, I'll skip to the end until this is done, and then we'll look at NopCommerce and the user interface itself afterwards. Okay, at this point, the NopCommerce installation is complete. You can see here by visiting that URL that I created, we've got our e-commerce site and a whole bunch of example content here, some of which you can see here. Now, if I log in, I'm gonna log in using that email as my account that we saw earlier. And you can see here that because I'm an admin user, the moment I log in, I have a link to administration on the top. So I'm going to click that. Now I'll point out a few things here within NopCommerce that will uh, make a lot of sense and come in handy later on. So first off, our product catalog. So if you click on that, you can see all the products within that catalog. It's fairly easy to uh, search. At that point, you can go and edit and make changes, prices, quantities, etc., etc. That's the first thing that you need to know. Uh, second thing, 
is configuration and plugins. This is where we will be installing uh, Sitecore plugins specific to our integration. So these are plugins that basically will then expose some web services and Commerce Connect will be talking to those web services. So we're going to install those into the plugins directory on the Knopf Commerce side. Uh, we're going to do that in Visual Studio. We're going to compile those. And then at that point, those plugins will be added here in this user interface. So then we need to go back in to the admin and plugins and we'll see those five plugins here and then we'll install those. So we'll go through that process now. Okay, so we're gonna go through the process of installing one of these plugins. Uh, the process is nearly identical for all five, so I'm not gonna repeat this five times. I'll basically just do it once and assume that uh, the viewer has it figured out and can do it for the remaining four. So first off, that is a zip file. You want to extract this directory to your not commerce plugins directory. So if we go back to inetpub, and our NOP31CC, we can see a plugins directory here. And by pasting, I will have extracted that. Now the contents of that is a Visual Studio solution, which I will open. Uh, normally it builds fairly cleanly. There's a couple things which you may need to change, uh, including references. So if I look here, uh, NOP core services web, uh, these all basically need to point to your uh, NOP Commerce DLLs that come uh, with the installation that you just did. So I'm going to browse to that. So NOP31CC bin, NOP Core, NOP Services, NOP Web, NOP Web Framework. We'll add all of those. And so. NOP Core, NOP Services, and NOP Web Framework, and say OK. We can see the references for those have fixed. Uh, similarly, for System Web MVC, that should exist within your NOP Commerce installation as well. So you can add that and click OK. And at this point, you can build that project. I'm not particularly concerned with the uh, test project. So you can see that that build succeeded. And so now we can visit the plugin on the not commerce administration screen. Ah, one more thing I should mention before uh, reloading the list of plugins is to change the output path of the bin file. Uh, by default, it's a very long and incorrect output path. Uh, you just really want to do uh, dot slash. That's going to put the DLL in that plugin bin at that point you can go back to NOP Commerce and say reload list of plugins and this should load correctly. Uh, if you get an error uh, basically saying uh, object reference not set to an instance of an object, that means that your build was incorrect, uh, it di didn't build or it didn't build the DLL uh, to the correct location. So it's essentially not able to reach that plugin in order to display it here. So if we go down to S4 Sitecore, you can see here that we have Commerce, Products, Web Services, and we can install that. And then at that point, the plugin will be enabled. And there's one last post installation step, and then you basically need to do this for the next four plugins. And so that post installation step is fairly straightforward. Uh, so we go back to our NOP31CC plugins, uh, Sitecore OBEC products directory. Um, by the way, OBEC was uh, an internal name for uh, Commerce Connect before it was uh, renamed to Commerce Connect. So if you see references to OBEC occasionally, that's what that is. And for the uh, public release of the code that we're looking at here, that will more than likely be changed. Um, but it's not necess it's not really an issue here. Um, there is a config file here. Now what you want to do is uh, modify that config file and basically 
establish uh, a URL uh, back to Sitecore. So uh, this is uh, e-commerce uh, OBEC. It's basically a placeholder URL. And so we changed that back to uh, what we named our Sitecore site, which was uh, Sitecore8cc and save that. And that's really the only change that's necessary. And this will exist more than likely, I believe, for all the other plugins as well, maybe save one or two. Um, and at that point, that's the process for installing, uh, sorry, building, installing, and enabling a plugin on NotCommerce. So you just need to do that four more times. So I'll load that up and then show you the end product. And then at that point, we can go back to Sitecore and install the commerce uh, the NOP Commerce connector on the Sitecore side and install the example site. And a lot of the work is in Visual Studio very similar, just updating uh, references, uh, doing a compile, and at that point everything should work. Okay, at this point you should now have five Sitecore plugins in your NOP Commerce plugin list. So that is after you've copied those, uh, changed those references, uh, changed the bin uh, output, for the DLLs, um, and then gone through the action of installing them in not commerce. So you should have five. So carts, customers, inventory, prices, and products. So now that that is done, we can go back to uh, Sitecore and install the NOP plugin on the commerce side. So, you know, similar sort of exercise, but instead of doing this on the external e-commerce system, we're doing this on the Sitecore side. So that's going to have a number of uh, basically pipeline replacements so that when Commerce Connect is running through those pipeline operations, it will kick in your custom code in that pipeline, which will then be talking to these not Commerce web services that we just installed now. So the second part of installation is complete. We've installed not Commerce 3.1 and we've built and compiled the Sitecore plugins that are necessary for the communication between Sitecore and not commerce. Next, we'll be installing the not commerce examples in Sitecore. So that is to install the not connector package, which basically consists of pipelines to connect to the not commerce installation and the plugins that we just installed. And we'll build that and configure the web services endpoints to point to that not commerce installation. Once that is done and we've got connectivity between the two systems, we can do a product synchronization. And at this point, content should flow from the NOP Commerce installation into Sitecore. And that includes uh, product information, uh, product imagery information, as well as uh, what is known as uh, product artifacts. So all the things like uh, names, features, and, and basically metadata that is applied to products. So we'll do those steps now. So we're back in Sitecore now, and just as we did previously, we're going to install a package. And if you haven't already do, done so, uh, upload the Sitecore Commerce Connect NOP Commerce Connectors package. So we'll choose that and finish. So again, the post installation steps, which I've mentioned that we're going to do afterwards, we're going to compile that solution, change the endpoint addresses in the config file to point to our NOP Commerce installation, and do one more renaming step. There's a disabled config file which we'll re-enable that will uh, enable the pipelines necessary. So I'll hit next and install. I'll wait till this is finished and then we'll continue the installation process. Okay, once that installation process is finished, you can see that a new solution has been added to the root of your Sitecore site. And we'll open that solution and we'll see here again, just like we had to do with the NOP Commerce plugins, we need to update some references. So in particular, we need to add the Newtonsoft JSON reference and we will browse to our Sitecore 8cc installation website bin and Newtonsoft JSON in order to add that reference. You also need to go through the process of either enabling Lucene or Solar. 
for the purposes of this demonstration, we'll be using Lucene. Uh, Solar is a little bit more work, uh, whereas Lucene, uh, all you need to do to enable it is simply remove the dot disabled tag on the config files. So all four Lucene config files remove dot disabled and that will enable Lucene to be used in the site installation. So we'll go ahead and finish that and that's it. Next step once that is done is to build our project. You can see here that it's up to date since I already did a build earlier. Next step after that, within our Sitecore installation, you will see here two connectors. One is app config include OBEC. And this is basically a disabled configuration file for doing a delayed product synchronization. We're not going to use that, uh, but I mention it here because again, that word OBEC was the uh, pre-release code name for what is now Commerce Connect. And often if you're looking at your installation and you're wondering what that is and why that's there, that's what that is. We're actually gonna look here in include connectors. And we can see here that we've got uh, notcommerce.config.disabled. We're going to rename that file and take a look at what's in there. And what's in there is basically all of those uh, pipelines. And so in any point in a pipeline operation, we're now inserting uh, references into our code so that you know when you're making a pipeline call for loading a cart or saving a cart, it's now calling our code. So that's really where the bulk of the work is happening there. There's one other file that we need to change and that is in the root of app config. And what we have here is uh, five URLs, one for each one of the plugins that is on the not commerce side. And so again, how from not commerce we were pointing back to Sitecore. From here we we're pointing from Sitecore to not commerce. So you can make those changes five times. And we'll click on that and we'll make sure that the reference for our plugin is complete. And in this case, it's not. And so by default, I believe it's that the path doesn't quite match up. So let's take a look at those paths here. So you can see it's actually product.plugin.sitecore.obex.products. So that's why you test these things. So we're gonna add that reference there before. So nop.plugin, we'll save that. And try this one more time. Okay, there we go. So we can now see from Sitecore, from that config file, the correct path to our not commerce server and those plugins that we created for the various services that we need. And so that's it. Next, we'll take these updated service references and actually update the service references within our project. So I'll just take one here. This is the cart service. Again, just like the plugins and all the other config changes, you need to do this five times. Go to configure service reference for the cart service. And you can see that I have my correct domain and correct path reference. That's slightly different from what's here in the default and say, okay, and at this point, the service reference is correct. So you need to do that five times. Once you've done that, you can do that build process and your project will build. So that's it. Now that we've done that work, we're going to do a product synchronization between Sitecore and the external e-commerce system, which in this case is NOP Commerce. And so we have here an additional tab, product synchronization, as well as the option to synchronize products or synchronize artifacts. Now, before we do that, first we will do a site republish. And then once this is done, 
we'll do the product synchronization process. So to do the product synchronization, go to the product repository item and click on synchronize all products. Now you can see here, there's a number of operations. Uh, first, you'll be synchronizing the metadata. Obviously that needs to exist before the products do. It will pause a number of indexes, including the Sitecore master index and the commerce product master index. Uh, commerce products have a specifically created Lucene index for both master and web. Uh, and then it goes through those and then it synchronizes the products as well as synchronizing uh, images and uh, other related uh, product sub items. So the first time you do this, it's going to take uh, quite some time. Um, there's about a couple hundred products in the NOP Commerce installation. If you're not seeing those here, you may not have enabled your sample content in your NOP Commerce installation. So it's going to go through all of these and will finish up. And it's taking a minute. While that happens again, we'll just run through that. So the job kicks off, runs through that pipeline process, first synchronizes those metadata values that are necessary. So classifications, manufacturers, uh, specification types. These need to exist before a product can use those. Then it will pause the indexes within Lucene, simply because you don't need to index given that the information that it will be indexing will change as soon as the synchronization process is done. And then it goes through the process of actually synchronizing those products. And so it does two things. It will synchronize items. So it's synch it's creating products within Sitecore from that external content tree or external content source, the NOP Commerce installation. And it will also synchronize imagery and other related um, assets from that external e-commerce system into the Sitecore Media Library. And so this is taking a while because it is synchronizing a lot of information. And that brings up, again, the delayed uh, synchronization uh, process, which you can undertake. So, you know, traditionally this may not be, or more than likely won't be a manual process. It will be something that you're doing on a scheduled interval uh, during a low traffic time in order to synchronize from that external e-commerce system into Sitecore. So I'm just going to pause this until it's done. And oh, as you can see here, it has actually completed the synchronization of the products. And But what it's doing now is it's re-indexing that information that appears in Sitecore. And so if I now expand out this product repository, you can see previously where we had no child items for things like manufacturers or things like product types. These now come in as child items. In some case, these child items have child items. And that's all coming from uh, not commerce being synchronized into Sitecore. So if we now look into Sitecore and look into the uh, products tree, first thing you'll want to do is on your view tab, turn on buckets. So this allows us to uh, navigate this bucket hierarchy. And I'm going to go to this uh, ASUS EEPC. Now you can see there is a product item and the product item has uh, a lot of the typical product information. So name, uh, short description, full description, etc., etc. But a lot of the information that you might, uh, in a normal Sitecore installation, strongly type. You may have uh, specifications, or you may even have a specification item. Following the simplicity model of Commerce Connect, you can see here that these all come in as individual specifications, which are basically uh, key value pairs. So our CPU type, AMD our hard drive type, 160 gigabytes, memory, one gigabyte. So these all come in as key value pairs. Similarly, the resources uh, is a resource item that simply points to the location of the item in the content tree. Uh, relations, you can have related products, cross sells, upsells, variants, et cetera, et cetera. If you had each of those, that would come in as another relation and another uh, type. Now, as I'm selecting these, you can see here that I'm getting value is not in selection list. 
So, you know, related products is coming in as a, uh, a multi, uh, you know, text selector, and it's not finding that value. Uh, similarly, for image type, it's not finding that value. If we go up to the product and down to something like the manufacturer, we're seeing all of the site core content here and not just the list of manufacturers to pick. And the reason for that is because we need to go through and go into some of those templates within Sitecore and edit the starting point for a lot of those templates so that the manufacturer uh, lookup field is only pulling manufacturers. Similarly, the uh, lookup field for related products is only pulling uh, the product relation types. So you'd see cross-sell, upsell, variant here. Uh, the reason that this is not populated by default is because, remember I was saying earlier, the product repository path name may be something different. By default, we like it at Sitecore Content Product Repository, but you may have changed that, in which case any of those uh, default values or uh, lookup locations that we've established would be incorrect. And so what we're doing now works. Uh, this is fine. We're still able to pull these values. Everything is, uh, is okay. Um, but if you are going to be augmenting a lot of your data in Sitecore after the fact, then you'll want to change those uh, product template lookup values. And we'll do that right now. Okay, so what we're going to do here is modify the lookup for this uh, relation type. So we have a number of relation types. We have uh, related products, uh, variants, cross sales. Um, and so as we can see here, the lookup field for that is not working. So if we go back and we can see here under lookups, product relation type, here are the lookups. So what we'll do is we will simply get the item path and copy that, go down to our related products and modify the template. So you can see here that the template value uh, for the source of that was incorrect. We just need to modify that and save that. And so now when we go back to the related products, you can see that the dropdown is working correctly. So there are a number of fields which you would need to do this for. Uh, related products, resources, uh, specifications, uh, manufacturers, etc., etc. All of these are uh, fields that you need to update the uh, source value for in the core templates. Again, I'm not going to do all of these. And also to point out, this is merely an optional step. If you're merely doing product synchronization into Sitecore and you're not changing those values in Sitecore, it's not necessary. The value is stored. This is really only necessary if you are going to have people editing those content items in Sitecore, in which case it makes their user experience complete. Okay, so we've done the third major installation step. And so for the last step, we're going to install the starter kit, which is our MVC presentation layer. Now, again, this is really only necessary if you're looking at some of the code for doing things like real-time price calls uh, or real-time inventory calls. If you're just interested in product synchronization and understanding those pipelines, well then merely installing the NOP Commerce examples uh, and the code and doing that product synchronization is enough. So that said, we're gonna go ahead and install the starter kit. Again, same process as before for package installation. So I'm going to either upload or choose the starter kit examples. So Sitecore Commerce Connect Starter Kit 8.0 and I will choose open and next, next and install. Now, there's a number of uh, post installation steps. We're gonna go through a lot of these. Uh, there's additionally a few things that aren't in the post installation steps, um, but these cover the, the bulk of it. It's basically doing uh, versioning remapping. So we're going to need to ensure that we have the right references uh, and need to ensure that we have the right versions within the right references. And sometimes this does differ from uh, Sitecore version to version. Uh, these steps are slightly different from 7.5 to 8, and that's often for things like MVC dependencies. So we'll go through this and install that package.
We will uh, overwrite NuGet in the packages config. Uh, this is overwriting the NuGet configuration that we had for the Knob Commerce connectors themselves, which we don't really need to worry about since those were installed and compiled correctly. So we will do that. And we'll let it run and we'll revisit this and open the solution after that is run. We will choose to skip the overwriting of the product repository. And the reason why we're skipping a lot of this stuff is because this is just created from the product synchronization. You can choose to override it, in which case you would just do another uh, product synchronization. Okay, so now we're gonna follow the post installation steps for the starter kit. By default, web config for MVC is enabled, so this is fine. Uh, typically, we don't need to do this portion. What we do need to do is add these assembly binding nodes to the configuration runtime section of the web config file. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, you need to be careful that uh, you're not duplicating entries. So in this case here, we have system web MVC, castle core, OData, EDM, system spatial, and web grease. Make sure that there's no duplicate entries there. We also don't need to do assembly binding because that exists. So we will just add that and save that web config entry. Next step, if you haven't already, uh, in order to restore the correct references, use uh, NuGet and uh, do a restore. If uh, you're seeing a yellow error message at the top here, click restore, at which point it will download the necessary dependencies. It'll take a few minutes. There's uh, about 10 dependencies. It will do that. Your references will be restored here in the list. You'll see that. Again, I'm not too worried about the test packages. And then go through the effort of building that project, which I have done, and so that is now up to date. So we've just built our solution, and we've reloaded Sitecore here. Now there's two final steps. The first is to create and replace that home item, and we're going to do a bit of a dipsy duel here. We're going to first rename the existing home item and second we are going to insert a new branch template which is under branches user defined sample store and we will call that home and insert that to replace the old home item and so this creates a new home item and also a number of sub items. We will delete the existing or original home item which we renamed to home2. It will notify us that there will be broken links and we will link those to another item which is our newly created home item. So we're doing effectively a replacement of this while ensuring that any old links are correct. Next up in the list is creating and deploying the engagement plan. So we'll go to the marketing center and under engagement plans, create an engagement plan called starter kit abandoned carts. Now the naming is very important because uh, the code that is kicking off that engagement plan is going off the website name. 
So if you've named your website and that's in the site's configuration in uh, web config or other include files, and you're probably quite familiar with that. If you've named your site something different, your engagement plan would need to change as well. In our case here, we're going to leave this as starter kit abandoned carts. So we'll go to the marketing center and engagement plans and do that. You can see here we already have insert options to uh, create a few engagement plans. There's three out of the box, abandoned carts, products back in stock, and new order placed. Really the only one implemented for this was abandoned carts. And so we change that and say create starter kit abandoned carts. It will create that engagement plan and we will deploy that. So last step after we've created that engagement plan and created those items from the starter kit as necessary, one more time we will do a full site republish. Okay, now the final step for testing is once we've published out that content, including the engagement plan that we created, is to load up the uh, the root of that website, uh, usually in a different browser. I'm using Chrome here, and this is actually a very common error. And the reason is is that the uh, changes that we need to do in the web config um, are usually based upon older versions, and since we're using NuGet often we're getting newer versions. And so here we can see that it's uh, expecting, uh, or it can't load uh, WebGrease version 1.5.1. And in fact, even in the documentation, uh, our redirect assembly here is assuming version 1.3. And so what we wanna do is find out, okay, what is actually the version of WebGrease in our bin directory? And We can look at the details and we can see, oh, it's actually 1.5.2.14234. Okay, fine. So we go back to our web config here and we will change this to 1.5.2.14234. And so what it's going to do is any of those version references that are looking for older versions, in which case it's looking for 1.5.1, we're just doing a uh, binding redirect to the new version, which is in the bin directory, which is 1.5.2.14234. Now that that's done, we can hit refresh. And this, of course, since we did a change to the web config, will reload Sitecore. And it'll take a second, but once that's done, we should see a loading of the site. And this is including uh, product information, which is coming from the product repository. But most importantly, we're also seeing the price and we're seeing the stock status. And those are coming real time from not commerce, that external e-commerce system. So we know a number of the elements are working. And then we'll do a few more tests in order to see that we have uh, cart working and user creation processes in play as well. So you should now have Sitecore 8, Commerce Connect for Sitecore 8, NopCommerce 3.1 plus the Sitecore plugins, the NopCommerce plugins on the Sitecore side that talk to NopCommerce, and the starter kit, which is our presentation layer. So that includes the site items for some of the product pages that we're looking at. Uh, the cart abandonment engagement plan, and the presentation layer, including prices, descriptions, stock, login, and carts. So we have all of those things working now. Next step is to load the products and test the shopping cart plan, including shopping cart abandonment. Okay, so we now have our site loaded here, and we're going to test a few aspects. The first is, uh, we'll notice on the homepage here, we actually have a few personalization rules in play. 
uh, and those personalization rules use some of the rule actions that are out of the box with Commerce Connect, so namely uh, cart value. So if, for example, I start to add this uh, notebook and this engagement ring and that notebook, the next time I visit that home page, you can see that I've got at least one product in the cart. The rule that was saying I have less than 5,000 in the cart has disappeared because I have more than that. And there's also a rule around uh, special offers. So I have these cart values here that I can now work off and that is being uh, synchronized to the XDB. Now, one of the things that I've done with my installation, you can see here, I have a number of Sitecore sites installed. So I actually went into the uh, connection strings and manually added Sitecore 8CC. Uh, I prepended that to my analytics database. So first thing here, automation states. If I look in my automation states, you can see a couple things going on here. I have uh, state transitions, which essentially means that uh, data is being put into that state. And I can actually look at those custom values. And what we're seeing here is basically the entity in the format for the cart. And I can keep going and we can see that document and we can see that, right, I have three things in that shopping cart. I have a total of uh, total value within that shopping cart, shipping payment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So all this shopping cart information in this uh, particular starter kit implementation is actually being synchronized to that automation state. It's being stored in that automation state as custom values. So we can see here that Commerce Connect is working for those aspects. Those cart pipelines are triggering and it is appending that information to those carts. Now, if I was to leave or abandon, some of these state transitions essentially get cleaned out and synchronized. So you can see here, I have three existing uh, values, and that was as I was adding to the cart, it was basically putting those state transition uh, entries into the XDB. If I go away and at a certain point, those get cleaned up and the, those either get moved into an abandonment or they get moved into other one other state. So that was the first test was really uh, seeing that the uh, cart pipeline processes, which push those cart values and store that cart value locally in XDB, at least in this starter kit implementation are in fact working. So that's the first test. Okay, the next test is basically around users. So we'll go back to our front end and we will click on register. And I'm going to register a username. So a couple things here. We'll go back to our MongoDB. And in a moment or two, we should have an additional record for contacts. Similarly, on the Sitecore side, if we look to our user manager, there will be a Sitecore user created for that account as well. It's created in the commerce users domain and it has that email account associated. And we now see that in the contacts table we have that record identified as well. So that user exists in both XDB as well as in the Sitecore.net membership provider. In the going deeper section, we will definitely be looking at uh, the differences between 
users, um, commerce users, commerce contacts, what's stored within Sitecore in the .NET membership provider and what is stored in the XDB. There's um, a fair bit of uh, complexity to users, especially around B2B scenarios where you may have one uh, or a number of users representing uh, an entity. So within a company, you'll have a number of users as well. And so there's uh, an abstraction that it, is necessary in order to uh, capture the complexity of those relationships. So we'll explore that further. Suffice to say that for our testing now, yes, we've confirmed that that entry is in Sitecore, in the .NET membership provider, as well as within XDB. And so at this point, now your installation is complete, and we'll be using this installation to explore a number of the concepts within Commerce Connect further.